Hello there, subscribers. Once again, I wanted to thank you for getting me to 3,000 views. And I'm sorry, 3,000 subscribers. And uh, for those of you who are new here, who haven't subscribed, please do. Um, and I would be more than happy to help you with these complicated vector graphics and with anything else that you might have a question about. So um, when it comes to drawing paths, uh, it could be a little bit more complicated, especially if you want to animate complicated paths. So let's go ahead and get a complicated path. So again, I'm going to be using my SVG edit in order to do some writing and some typing. Um, what I usually do is I'll create a line here, press shift to keep it straight, and I'll say copy, paste, paste. Okay, oops, I always do that. Let me make sure I do my selector here. And we're going to kind of make sure that this is evened out a little bit. Okay, and let's say select all, line it all up. Okay, so now we have our um, lines that are going to kind of guide me through my writing. And then I'm going to bring out a layer just so that I don't mess up my lines while I'm writing. Okay, and then we're going to, in this SVG edit, we have this wonderful drawing tool. And so I'm going to put here a thank you. Now I'm using my mouse, so please bear with me. And then you. And then our exclamation point. Okay, so that's pretty much the best I could do for now. Usually I use my pen on my iPad, but let's you work with this. So now that we have that layer done, we can take this layer and delete it. And there's our thank you. Okay, so we're making sure that we are at 1280 by 360. Then we can go ahead and select all of this, starting with this path here, and then go all the way down to here, say copy, and then paste, say run, and there's our thank you that we created, okay? So now that we have that set up, that's the easy part, <laughs> if you can call it that. Okay, so what we just did was we were able to type out whatever we, write out whatever we wanted using a single path line. Okay, and of course, if you have your pen, again, your Apple pen or something like that, where you can draw paths a little easier, um, we can go ahead, you can go ahead and do it that way. So now the JavaScript is straightforward, it's just a bit of it. Okay, so there's a few new pieces of, uh, of code that if you're not familiar with uh, JavaScript, it might be a little bit more complicated. But if you have any questions on any part of this code, just go ahead and look on YouTube. There's explanations for each one of these, but I'll do my best to explain what I can as I go along. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it paths. And I'm going to use very... Um, self-explanatory variables so that it's easy for you to follow along. So we're going to say document query selector all because now we're going to create an, uh, an array of all the paths. So in order to find the path, we're going to go to SVG path. So all we did was we went into the SVG and into and we're looking for each path that's created. Okay. So I know I'm going to need an iterator later on, so I'm just going to do i equals zero to create an, uh, a nice little iterator. Paths for each, so that we're going to iterate through each path. And then we're going to create a function inside there. Okay, so here's our function. 
So now we can say console log. Oh, and we have to have some arguments here. So what we're going to create in the function is the item and the index of each item. So we can log the index for each one of these. And as we can see, we have about six paths, no, seven, because we have the index is zero. So we have seven paths that make this up. So now we can do a whole lot of information. We can do a lot of things with that information, okay? So let's go ahead and keep our console at the bottom here. Let's erase it for now. We don't need it. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do when we go through each path is we're going to iterate, okay? Because we're going to use that I later. And so now we're going to say index, sorry, item. What we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, we're going to do our path. If you're familiar with how we draw paths with CSS, um, usually we'll say the set, the stroke dash array and the stroke dash offset. And then when we figure out what those are, we can go we can go from whatever the length of the offset is back down to zero and that'll basically draw each path. So we can do that with each one of these. We can say that in item, we can set the attribute and the attribute we want to set is the stroke dash array. And what we want to do with it is create a variable called path length. Okay. And we're going to we're going to create that variable later, and so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say copy, paste, and so we're going to do the dash offset also to the path length. So let's create that variable. Path length will equal not this. I'm so used to using um, the this key keyword, but we don't need to do that because we already have this item which refers to each one of the paths. So for each path, we're going to take the path and we're going to get the total length, which is the um, function to be able to get the length of each one of these. So let's go ahead and for each one, let's console log the path length. Okay. And uh, so that we can keep track, let's do the, uh, index also. So we're going to run that. And now we can see that each one of the indexes shows each one of the paths. Now you notice that it also erased. The reason it erased is because we set the stroke dash array and a stroke dash offset to be exactly the same, which causes it to basically disappear. So now as we go from this, actually, if we did divide it by two, for example, uh, let's see, divided by two over here and divided by two over here, or basically if we said the dash offset was divided by two, we're going to get half of the p paths in each case. You see, we got half the paths. Okay. So we're going to put this back to full. and now they're all erased. Okay. So how do we animate them from the path length of which each one it's to it's zero version? Well, we're going to just basically do exactly that. We're going to say animate. So in the inner HTML, we're going to actually write out animate in each one of these. Okay. So let's go ahead and say animate. And so since we're inside each one of the H to each one of the paths, we don't have to refer to the path itself. So we can just go ahead and say animate and uh, it's going to animate inside the path. I'll show you in a second. So basically we're going to say animate. We're going to say attribute name. And what we're going to do is the stroke dash offset for each one. And we're going to say uh, begin immediately. 
we're going to say the uh, duration for each one. Let's just put um, three seconds just so we can see what's going on. And then we're going to say we're going to zero. Okay, we're going from whatever the path length is down to zero. And that's going to actually draw everything for us. And of course, we're going to say fill freeze. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, we're going to also show what each one of the item inner HTML is so we can keep track of what's going on. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So as you can see, it's drawing out everything at the same time. Now that's pretty cool looking. Let's clear that out and try that again. If this is kind of the effect you're looking for, it kind of works out. But we want a writing effect. How would we write? We would basically write like this and etc. Right? So what we want to do is we want each animation to happen after the previous is done. And the way we do that with SMIL, S-M-I-L, with SMIL, the animation of, of SVGs, is we'll give each one of the animations an ID and we'll instruct the next animation to begin after the previous animation has finished. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is give each one an ID. So ID equals... A, now each one has to have an ID. So we have to say A plus, plus, and let's just say I for now. Okay, so if we run that, we have what we're looking for, which is, uh, starts right here, A1, A2, A3, etc. Okay, so but what we want is we want it to happen after the previous one. So here's going to be our issue. If the first one says begin right away, we want each one after that to begin after the first one. We don't want it to say begin zero seconds. We want it to say begin zero seconds for the first one and then begin after the other one ends. So this is going to change depending on the first one. So in order to do that, we do an if else statement. Okay, so now we have our if. So we're going to say if the index is zero, okay, then we're going to do this first one right here. And then if otherwise, we're going to change this to create something for the other ones. So if it's the first one, we're going to say that the inner HTML is, well, we can keep that at A1, but uh, we have A1, then the attribute name, then we're going to say begin zero seconds. We're going to have all this be perfectly fine. However, if it's after that, we're going to say, we're going to continue with the ID, we're going to say the attribute, but we're going to say begin. So let's say, imagine it's A1 end. That's the normal, but this is going to be a variable. So let's go ahead and say plus, plus. Now I'm going to say just I right here, but you'll see that there's an issue once that happens. So they say run. So now we have the first one starting, but now nothing else is happening. Why? Well, because we said that the first one is A1 and it starts right away. But the next one, we said animate A2, we have here begin when A2 ends. So the iterator is going too far. So what we're going to do is we're going to say A1, I'm sorry, AI minus 1 so that we can keep the iterator. Now we could have just said this was A2 and then continued, but this is a lot better and would allow you to do, uh, would allow you to enter any paths, no matter how long or how short the paths are. So let's go ahead and run it. And obviously we'll change the, the, um, the speed in a little bit, but as you can see, it's waiting till the previous one is going. 
and then going to the next one here. So what's happening? The problem is that these short ones are taking three seconds as well as these long ones taking three seconds. But that's not the logic we want. The logic we want is that each one of these seconds is going to be um, uh, proportionate to how long the uh, the uh, the uh, stroke is. So that's exactly what we're going to do. This number, instead of being a constant, this number is going to be this number divided by whatever number is the speed. Okay, so that means we're going to need another variable here. And the variable is going to be speed. And let's for now make it 750. Okay, and so now we're going to say that instead of the duration being three seconds, we're going to say that the duration in both instances is quote and then space plus plus and then we're going to say it's path length divided by speed okay and let's make sure that this says seconds okay and so when we run this you can see now it's a little bit better because depending on how long each one is, is how long it's going to take. How did we do that? Well, now you can see that this first one is this much. This divided by 750 is this number. This divided by 750 is this number. This divided by 750 takes a little longer because it's a longer amount of a path. So when we run it, it looks like you're going straight through everything, right? And of course, you can make it faster or slower depending on um, this number. So the higher it is, the faster it goes. So let's make it really fast. That's nice. Or we can make it really slow, like 250. and be very careful with it, right? So uh, that's basically how you want to do it. Now, what's great is that now this is created, you can even do this with complicated SVGs. So let's say instead of this, you wanted a path that has, uh, I don't know, some, some animals. So let's go to some animals here. Let's do a bird. No, that's a cat. Let's do... What else do we have here? A camel. And notice, depending on the order that I create these, that's going to be the order that these are drawn out. Okay. So now that we have all of these, let's push this over a little bit like this, like that, like this, make this a little bit bigger. Push it down here. Okay, so now we have these complicated uh, drawings right here. We can say select all of this. Say copy. And the reason I'm not saying select all is because I don't want to have to change this every time. So let's go here, erase all of it, and press paste. Say run. And now, no matter what we put in here, it's going to draw it all. So now we made it super slow, so let's speed it up a little bit. And there we have it. It's drawing everything, no matter how complicated, how long the path is, it's going to draw it out. And of course, you could do other animations. For example, we can animate it and then fill out these now if you want to learn how to do that like some maybe some compound animations perhaps draw it out and then fill it in and then do some other things please let me know and i'd be more than happy to do that for you guys so have a beautiful day thank you very much and once again thank you very much for subscribing have a beautiful day